What's up, guys? 45 Lampkin Lane, as always. I'm X Miller, your host. Tonight, we got a good show for you. James calling in about five minutes. And as always, that was Vinny Accardo on the beat. And Vinny's actually cooking up something for me nice right now. I uh, had him do some sort of 90s type beat. Well, it was weird because I wanted to do a 90s type beat. I said, yo, I got this idea for a song, whatever. I want to come back and make a song, a couple songs. And um, he, he was like, oh, well, I got a beat that's like right just what you're talking about. And he sent me the beat and I was like, damn, that's a, exactly what I had in mind. So he's cooking that up. Um, actually, I have it. So I've been working on that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes when it goes. A little bit about James. It's uh, James Azrael. I don't want to mess that up. Um, James is a prop collector. It, it's a it's a long name, and I don't want to mess it up. But he it's like a you know a prop preservation museum type thing that he goes on the road with, and he has all these crazy props from all these movies. And when he comes on, he's going to tell you about that. Um, as always, I'm having a few drinks, so... <laughs> now nah, I'm good, though. Um, should be fun. We'll see what he has to say. I got some questions lined up. Uh, we don't really do a script on Lampkin Lane. I kind of just wing it. Obviously, with Chris Duran, I, I tried to write some questions that I made sure I wanted to ask because, you know, he's one of my big role models and I wanted to make sure that if it was something I personally wanted to know that I asked it and even regarding that interview there was uh you know some people like why didn't you ask about how is it working with LL Cool J and it's like man that's a good question but you could go into our group I'll give you guys the link if you want it and he has like an ongoing Q&A and a, a couple people already asked about that he already answered that and he already answered a lot of things in there. So I didn't ask much about the cast. It was really a Michael Myers interview. So that's that. I got a few it things coming up. Pennywise from the 2017 movie. I got the prosthetic pieces. I got the costume. We're ready to go. I dropped a video teaser. Um, yeah. So we got a few things coming up. The song... Um, I'll, I'll reveal the full makeup because the teaser wasn't full makeup. I'll reveal that. And it should be cool. James coming on in two minutes. You know what's so weird? I'm just going to admit this right now. It could be my best friend calling. And James is one of my best friends in the hobby. And uh, I always get so nervous. I mean, I, I naturally have anxiety. Some shit happened to me at a party. And it gave me, like, anxiety for, like, the rest of my life. I mean, I do a stressful job. I'm on the ambulance and stuff. But for some reason, like, on the fire department, I can do that. But, jeez, these interviews make me, like, nervous. <laughs> nah, and I appreciate James for coming on. He certainly doesn't have to do this. I've known James for a while, so if we mess with each other, um, I didn't condone that. And James should be looked at as a bully. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if we mess with each other, you know, that's natural. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, so. Basically like we did with Duran, Chris Duran, we're gonna just shoot the pile of poop until James calls in. I did bad programming this computer's time, too, so he might call, like, right now. Uh, well, not, like, right right now when I point, but, like, any second now he's gonna call, so. Oof. Gather myself. It's been a crazy week. It's 2018 now. Is this the first? I think this is the first 2018 show. I, I, I can't remember. My brain is so fried lately. Lately, it's just been hectic. Everybody's sick. Oh. But. We got a good show. So there's that. 7.59, I told James to call at 8 o'clock. And it's 8 o'clock now. 
should be waiting for that shy time uh shy town number to pop up any second James is from the Chicago area, so. I better not get a bill with these motherfuckers on my show and have, like, <laughs> a crazy-ass bill. No, I'm just kidding. All right, it's 8 o'clock. Should be uh, getting the call any second now. And I know it's a, I don't know how, uh, should be a little bit of a time zone difference from here to Chicago, so. But I know it's not off, like, you know, it's off by, like, hour or something like that. It's not off by, like, minutes. Odd minutes, you know what I mean? But. Alright, well, we'll just wait for him to call. I've been doing, um, I got a little it bust that I did. It's like four inches long. So for everyone that's asking on my status, that thing is like four inches tall. So that is not a real it mask or whatever bust. And here we go. James is calling. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going, James? All right. All right, so we're recording now. I mean, obviously, it's not a live show or nothing like that, but you're on right now. All right, how do I sound? Is it, uh... Oh, you, you sound sexy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. How's things been going, man? Can you hear it okay? Yeah, we can hear you pretty good. You should be all set on the thing. Let me, uh, take it a little over here. Spike in a tiny bit. Uh, all right. How have things been going, James? Going good. Going good. Is this part of the interview, or are we just chat? <laughs> no, no. I'm in a, we're obviously going to get into questions and stuff, but you know what I mean. We're just starting out. I was talking before the interview, and I was saying no. It like it could be a family member calling, and no matter what, I always get anxiety doing these things. So uh, <laughs> if I get a little jittery, that's my fault. <laughs> but um, yeah. So 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 yeah. You you run this uh this crazy prop. Preservation. How do you how do you say the full name? How do I say the full name? Yeah, like how do you pronounce it? Um, I know there's a bunch of. I didn't want to mess it up saying it. I know it's the horror prop preservation, um, but you'll have to finish it for me. Uh, horror and sci-fi prop preservation association. Yes, man, <laughs> you have some amazing props in there. Thanks, man. Thanks. Um, what would you say, like, just, you know, we'll get into some good stuff, but just for some silly little one-off questions, what's, like, your favorite prop that you have? Um, you know, I really should have a solid answer to this because everyone asks it. That <laughs> uh, shows, interviews, everything. And right. I always am having a hawing because I... I I mean, I have ones I like more, but, but picking a favorite, it's, <laughs> um, what, what I'll say is, uh, okay, um, I have, I have, for instance, a piece, it's a very personal piece that I've never, never brought out or anything because it, it means that much to me. Um, so I, I guess that would technically fall into my favorite which is the complete wardrobe robin williams wore in uh what dreams may come oh wow um and then it's on a full display with his uh, uh life cast and everything and it's just amazing tom spina made that up um oh did he that's crazy yeah uh, but then i i have dark man's complete wardrobe that liam neeson wore in Dark Man. Um, the uh, dark, have you seen Dark Man? Are you familiar? Uh, I think I've heard of it. And you know, when you surfing around, you see all these stills and stuff. So, <laughs> all right. Well, you and everybody needs to see Dark Man. It was 1990. It's Sam Raimi, uh, Evil Dead. Sam Raimi. Oh, okay. Um, he created a superhero that's kind of based on the Universal Monster. So it was a combination of. Of like Doctor Frankenstein, Igor, and, 
Invisible Man, um, and he's a scientist and uh, mob hit, blah, blah, blah. He becomes Darkman, and uh, it's Liam Neeson. It's kind of the role, you know, that, that right. really made him. Um, and it, it's funny that uh, people, it's a Marvel comic book, but it was made a Marvel comic book after the movie came out. And he's done stuff with Ash from Evil Dead. Oh, wow. Was, uh, Dark Man vs. Army of Darkness right. was a series. And, uh, and whatnot, but I'm, uh, I'm sidetracking here. Uh, no, it's all right. <laughs> is I, I kid you not, I have it in my will. Uh, if I die, I, I'll be buried in the Dark Man. Oh, man, Dark that's crazy. <laughs> so, have you ever told uh, anyone that? Like, obviously, besides your friends, like, have you ever said that in an interview or anything? Yeah, I, I say it a lot because it's hilarious because uh, I, it accompanied with other items so uh, like sci-fi stuff like like uh, or like the ice cream gun that I have from Ice Cream Man oh yeah just load the coffin up with weird ass stuff and and then a hundred years two hundred years when they excavate and dig me up their minds are gonna blow as to what the society was like <laughs> You know what? I'm I'm sure you're. Uh... Hold on a sec. Are you on speaker or something like that? Do you have me on speaker? It kind of sounds a little bit of hollow. A little hollow. Let me try this. Is that better? Yeah, it sounds a little better. All right. <laughs> what I was gonna say is, I bet your neighbors get a pretty good sight every time you're getting something new or getting, uh, you know, moving things to a convention. <laughs> Uh, they used to. My, my old neighbors were, were quite interested. Um, I, I don't really even know my neighbors anymore. Yeah, um, me neither. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I, I do laugh about is I, I do... Um, how do I make this say this without sounding like an absolute porter? There's really no space <laughs> in my house. <laughs> um, that's partially because of this, this museum. I have to as to have everything stored. Right. Um, and accessible and then in and out, in and out of different exhibits. So, about the only space I have to do stuff is the kitchen area. <laughs> and it's right by my, my patio sliding doors. So, if you, and I'm on a busy street right next to a hospital and, and a high school. And, uh, and stuff. So, if you drive by and you happen to glance into my house <laughs> at any given moment, you might see mannequins being dressed and um, and odd stuff like. And, and I'll do things on purpose too. Like I I had the human centipede set up in the window for a while. Um, yeah. <laughs> has anyone um has anyone like has anyone ever uh, had the cops come to your house or something like? <laughs> Called the cops? Yeah, like this guy's got some weird shit in his house. You need to go <laughs> knock on the door. <laughs> um, I've, I've, I, I, I have worried about for other reasons. Um, it, and nothing ever came of it, but cool. I have five parrots in my house. Oh, right. The and, birds. And the, the one, Sergeant Beep, uh, got his name because he beeps. Uh, when I got him as a, as a rescue, he came to me beeping uh, like a smoke alarm. Oh, that's funny. I yeah, especially so, am biased to that. Yeah. I think that's funny. And it's perfect, you know, in succession. Perfect. Like, anyone hears it would assume that's what it is. And he does it even louder than one. So, in the <laughs> summer, if you've got the windows open, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And now, and now uh, my, my uh, Moroccan cockatoo, Reebok, the pink chicken, she, uh, she imitates the house alarm. I had uh, when I was when I was away. The person taking care of the birds kept setting off the alarm. So after three days, Reebok now repeats the house alarm. <laughs> Jeez, you know, kind of so, random, kind of random. But I I didn't know that bird. Some birds had the name chicken. I mean, uh, uh, I know that a bird is a chicken, but like I didn't know that like parrots and stuff had the name chicken. I don't they know. don't. They don't. I call her a pink chicken. Okay, all right. Because I was like, yeah. man, you know, there's so <laughs> yeah. much about everything I don't know. I can't believe I didn't know that. But um, yeah, I, know. 
I just refer to her as a pink chicken because she's big. She's pink. Yeah, those are cool birds, man. You you, you post some you post some funny ass videos with those. But uh, <laughs> so when you when you go to these conventions and stuff with all these props, um, do you like? You can't just put them in your car. Do you have like a U-Haul or something that you have to rent? No, I well, I, I have a trailer, so basically the same thing. Okay, yeah. all right. Truck and a trailer, yeah, it's a, it's a large one, six by ten, I think. And um, how much work is it? Like, you know, it's obvious that it's a lot of work, but like, so you get to the conventions, and then do you have like a crew that helps you unload it into the convention? Um, I, I, <laughs> and I don't mean this because if they're listening, I love them. Right. I don't mean this <laughs> negatively to them, but generally, no. Right. Uh, ty- typically, I am doing load in myself, and that's you know. Yeah. Everybody that works with me is, is doing it voluntarily. We're not profit. There is no money. Right. Involved except for <laughs> what I put out. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about that. Um. So, you know, they most setups for things are happening on, on a Thursday or Friday, and they're working or whatever. So, yeah, generally it's me who's, who's doing most of that. Um, wow. Yeah, it, it, uh, uh, it it's taken me seven, seven to ten hours to set up an exhibit. Wow. It's also taken me as little as, as two or three hours, and that's when I have have to help. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I saw something that was pretty interesting, you guys. Uh, actually, I was, I think we were all talking about it, but, um, like, you you would say it's funny what you find in the pockets of some of the wardrobes and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I found underwear. Um, <laughs> yeah. Gum wrappers, um, yeah, phone numbers, garbage, uh, iPod, earbuds, or whatever those are, uh, socks, just random things. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Never any money or any, you know. <laughs> right. Although, I do uh, I do know somebody that found some Canadian money in their pocket once, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, a lot of stuff is shot in Canada. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that is true, yeah. What, uh... Like, what got you to be like, oh, I'm going to collect props? Did you have, like, a few props, and you're like, you know what? I could I could do something with this. I'll collect more. You mean, you mean how did I, I go from collecting to the museum or just get into collecting? Yeah, I mean props, because, I mean, we're all hobbyists and stuff. We buy masks, whatever, replicas. But how did you get into, like, oh, I'm going to collect screen-use props? When, when I discovered them. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, when I when I first discovered the, uh, I, I I think it was it was Jeepers Creepers too was the movie that got. Um, sorry, I got a little dry mouth there. Had to, had to sip. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, Jeepers Creepers too. Uh, when I discovered uh, Premier Props selling some some items from the movie, and uh, I still have that piece. I. I it's one of my, my favorites, uh, again, for different reasons. Right. Uh, it was just barbed wire in a spool, um, or bail, whatever they, they call it. Yeah. And uh, it's it's metal wire with rubber barbs, and I like to throw it to people. I'm sorry, say that again? The last the last line, I couldn't, I didn't get that. Oh, I, I like to throw it to people. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get all freaked uh, out. Yeah, because they all catch it. You right. Know, and, and, but they've got this look on their face that they've got holes in their hands now. And it just amuses me to no end. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so it just, it just progressed, you know, once I got into it and I started discovering the stuff out there, I just kept looking. And, and I mean, the same way we get into every hobby, you know, just you found that Myers mask, next thing you know, you're on a forum. And, right. Next thing you know, it's, it's 15 years later. <laughs> Man, so when you're at the conventions and stuff, these are pretty, uh, I mean, I obviously imagine some of the pieces are pretty expensive. Um, do you have to 
like display them in cases and stuff or are you are, are you know you're like well some of these people they'll be okay so i'll leave them on display or like are some of them more important that they have to be in cases majority i have behind cases uh or in in my my uh my large cases outside of the little girls because <laughs> that's that's just big you know right yeah and um, it's 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 nice of you too because i i see you do let people touch them and stuff like <clears throat> excuse me like if you have a you know a machete from the jason movie i think or you know someone can hold that you yeah. know what i mean not that i'm counting but yeah horrible <laughs> what'd you say horrible well just just as an example though like you'll see someone posing with that and it's like oh okay cool he let them you know hold that or if it's like a wig or something like that yeah it, it depends on the prop because obviously especially with the word in in our name preservation the, the whole idea of doing this is, is to promote both the conservation props to keep them from, from dying and deteriorating and, and to save them and, exactly um but to preserve the history that they are uh, for later generations and just for everybody to enjoy. So I can't let just anything be handled. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on, on the item. And for a long time, uh, we were um, doing as a fundraiser. It was a fun walk with a prop. So if you donated, it really didn't matter how much, you know, if you donated take a photo yeah and and i imagine it not to be judgmental but it might depend on the person like if some someone comes up to you and is acting nutty you know you might you might be like well i'm i might not let this person hold this <laughs> so I, i'm sure uh, i'm sure you uh you're more if they donated i never i never uh denied you there know? you go i mean outside of, of certain items again you just can't be Right. Yeah, no, it's you just have to keep a closer eye on, on what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. You've never had anything stolen, right? The what? You've never had anything stolen, right? I have not. Okay, that's good and fortunate. Yeah. I obviously don't wish that on you. I just was asking. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's just... I try not to think about that. <laughs> no, yeah, of course. I, I wouldn't think that's something that would, you know, you would want to think about, but, um. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just don't, don't want that to happen, so. Is there any props? <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm sure you get the question a lot. Like, oh, what's your, what's a prop that you, like, dream of having? But, like, what are some props that are unreachable that you're like, oh, I'd like to have that, you know what I mean? Just because it'd be cool to have. Well, uh, Star Wars is always the, the go-to there. Yeah, um, there's some big ones it, there. It's, uh, and I do have some, some Star Wars props and some, some really amazing ones. Yeah. Um, but the, the reality of it, and I don't like to talk money, but there's no way around it with, with Star Wars. And um, I literally would rather have a house than a stormtrooper helmet. <laughs> like a real one? Yeah. Oh man, what are we talking? Yeah. What are we talking um, for a price on that? I I, I believe uh, the sand trooper helmets are for around two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. <laughs> so that's wow. Around two hundred and seventy, two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. I would buy a car and an apartment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> get the apartment the complex. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane, man. But those are highly sought after. Star Wars right. is one of right. the and, and that's, biggest, that's most. From the first one, which is forty years ago. Yeah. And there's there really are only maybe two, two or three that are known to be left. Right. Yeah. So. And and Star Wars is 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 one of the most popular friend, if not the most popular franchise that there possibly uh -huh. could be. Oh yeah. So, uh, there's a lot of good stuff to come out of that. I mean, even if you're not a fan and you look at all the props and stuff, it's it's crazy. You know, you want to know what I thought was... Sure. Keep going, sure my bad. That, that Star Wars is more valuable than gold. <laughs> By the pound, yeah. <laughs> what, what I thought was crazy is, 
I've never seen movies drop so fast like Star Wars do after one another. <laughs> well, that never used to happen. That's that's a Disney thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Does so? Is that how Disney rolls? They do that with all their movies. Well, no. That's when Disney bought them. That seems to be their marketing plan. Um, we we waited near what eighty, almost six. Between 15 and 20, I have to do the math. Right. I don't want to right now. <laughs> no, math is so terrible, bro. I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it, was a, it was over 15 years between Return of the Jedi and when the prequel came out. Right. Episode 1. And then it was another uh, 12 years or something until, uh, between Episode 3 and, and uh, Episode 7. Wow. So, yeah, this, Disney's the one that's doing it. What's the which what's, I'm happy for because it, it gives me something to look forward to in December. Every year. Oh, of course. <laughs> we know the hero, uh, the piece everyone wants to always know about in Halloween is the hero mask. What's the hero piece from Star Wars? Is that like Vader's helmet from the original or something? Or why well, the hero is just the term for. A prop that is uh, the main prop. It's uh, another word for it is the beauty piece. So it would be right. like the working gun or the metal knife. Something that's that going to be seen in the close-ups. Could you? It's not necessarily the one that gets used the most either. So is it AKA something that like isn't a stunt or backup? Right. Those would not be the hero, even though they could be used the most. Right. So, so there's many, many, many hero props. The thing with like a movie like Halloween is with the budget so low, they don't have a bunch of different options. Right. You know, there, there really wasn't any. I mean, because they also didn't do things exact in replication. <laughs> in that aspect, there wouldn't be a difference between their their hero and their stunt masks. Right. Either. Right. Um, they just took care of one maybe better or it's just the one that it's just the one that that, that still exists <laughs> yeah and you know, this, <laughs> everyone's saying they would love to see the 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 mask now in the new Halloween I'm like come on that thing is <laughs> he puts it on it's it's over <laughs> You're right, yeah. for the mask yeah. <laughs> with the, the lawsuits and everything I don't know if that's so Okay, so if they have lawsuits, are they not going to be able to use, like, original likeness in the new Halloween, or? Technically. <laughs> yeah, because you're um, really good at the legal stuff, man. I always come to you with legal for legal advice because, well, you, I mean, you've been... Not, not say that, <laughs> you, you've been through a lot of the legal system, so, I mean, not that... I'm not saying you've been taken to court and stuff, but, you know, you... Uh, it's it's uh, technically illegal to give legal advice if you're not... <laughs> really? I mean, we're just talking. Nobody's gonna. Hey, guess what? James is on forty-five Lampkin Lane talking all that illegal stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so I have a, a jacket from you, that's from Chicago Fire. Now, is that what? What was that? Was that like a? Because it says from producer Dick, like to Dick Wolf or something on the tag. That thing was crazy. Yeah, yeah. That that's a it's a crew gift. Oh man. I, yeah, so I, the producer gave that out to, to the guys that were making the show. That uh that blew my mind when I opened the box. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this is crazy. So and I, I also have a from you a little backdraft fire sting, fire extinguisher. Yeah, didn't you soak somebody with that? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe <laughs> me being crazy. I probably did. <laughs> I remember way back when we were talking about, uh, remember we were going to, you you probably don't, but remember we were going to do those, like, tombstones? I was going to make tombstones, like, Pamela Voorhees and stuff, and Judas Myers and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, vaguely. <laughs> vaguely, you're cutting them out of styrofoam? Yes, yeah. Yeah. And, I don't know, it was weird, we believed in that, but we never did anything with it, but, uh... <laughs> I actually, I have a picture I still got to send you. I just found it. It's it's the H2O sketch, and it says, To my good friend, James uh, 
Azrael. And I'm like, I don't remember this, but this is definitely his. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, it's spot on too. So it's like, yeah. The, the, uh, the one from the beginning. The... Yes, yeah, the police yeah. sketch. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Speaking of H2O, um, have you seen the updates about the new book? Yes, I did. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything though. I want you to say what what's going on with that. <laughs> All right. Well, we're working on. I'm gonna throw the pitch out here. We're working on the new book, uh, HSPPA Volume Two. Yep. Planet of the Props. Oh, that's sick. Um, and it's it's basically uh, a book version of an exhibit where it's gonna it's got high res images of various props and, and we do a lot of them. The last book had. 74 different movies oh man that's crazy that's yeah. crazy uh, 150 pages or 151 pages I think the last one was um, and then with it are personal stories from myself my other curators and the featured exhibitors right um, it, you know it's we're not about telling what uh, the plot of the movie and, and things like that what we're telling is what these props mean to us what, about the props uh, background on, on how they're made and stuff for instance um, Nick uh, Benson who was an SFX uh, special effects guy on, on, I'm speaking and in, in writing so <laughs> yeah, that's alright man SFX meaning special effects I thought you were as rail so <laughs> you were dying <laughs> choo choo, choo. Um, so he was the special effects uh, guy on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4. And I have the uh, soul puppet on Freddy's shoulder at the end that's tearing Freddy and Nick puppeteered that. So Nick is contributing to the book, talking about how uh, the prop worked and, and, and uh, how it was made, and, and along with the personal stories he has from shooting that scene. Um, including a funny one about Robert and this puppet in particular. Man. Like, uh, spoil. <laughs> That's classic. It's, it's pretty amazing. That's uh, classic, dude. So on top of that, and this isn't just because this is uh, 20 years after H2O, this is the 20th anniversary, 2018. Yep. Uh, it just kind of played out this way. Um, uh, Christopher Durant, who played Michael in yep. H2O, is one of our featured exhibitors in the book. Man. Uh, he's a collector himself, and he is going to be presenting one of the props that he kept, uh, and that means a lot to him, and, and right. kind of it's all about it. On top of that, a uh, good friend and uh, other collector, Darren Hughes, is also a featured exhibitor in the book, and he is putting in the uh, the Winston and the can be Myers masks. So we're going to have high, high res images of those main masks from H2O. Is, is Darren not the coolest guy, man? He's, he's such a cool guy. He is. He is. Such a nice guy. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy talking to him cause he's just, he's so knowledgeable and he's so laid back. It's like, you know, there's never going to be no bullshit with him. You can just talk. Just just get him his strawberries and he's good. Yeah, he's funny, man. I mean, and Chris, too, man. Congratulations on that because Chris is like, it just, again, I mean, not to repeat what I just said about the other guy, but I mean, Chris is another amazing person that is so easy to get along with. Such a nice, oh, kind absolutely. soul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm glad that I could have you on here. And then, you know, he was also on. So it's just, I mean, it's crazy. Um, yeah. I always brag about you. I'm like, yeah, I know this guy, man. You know, no big deal. He, he he travels around with all these crazy props. No big deal, you know? So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm grocery shopping today. Yeah. Um, to get um, the birds, their, their various fruits and vegetables. And <laughs> I, I got recognized. In, really? In the, in the, uh, the pepper aisle. In the pepper <laughs> aisle. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> from the exhibits, you know, so that was, that was, and it's been a while for me. Right. You know, back with the, the band and stuff, I, I used to get recognized all the time as, as Vinnie Paul, 
Pantera instead of oh, geez. me from Court Chester. But it's still, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Right, and and you've done a, a little bit of, of film, right? Like you've done some, um, what am I trying to say? You've done some films, Horror? right? Yeah, yeah, like you've done um, some in the horror genre and stuff like that. What films did you do? Um, uh, Kurt, uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this one. No, it's all right. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> um, well, so my, my brain isn't, isn't thinking in self-promotion. It's like, oh, 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 Hospital 2, right? Huh? Hospital 2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hospital <laughs> 2, I, I was in briefly, I get killed. But it's because of Hospital 2 that uh, I'm now working with Daniel Henry Taylor. So that was bad? Um, he was the little redhead kid from the movie Return of the Swamp Thing. Okay. And he too will be in this next book, uh, which is on Kickstarter right now. Go there and, and pre-order a book. Uh, <laughs> Not to cut you off, but at the end, we're going to let you, you can tell them where they can all go to either donate or, you know, look all this stuff up too. So. Um, so he's going to be in the book and, and, that was 30 years ago that movie came out. Jeez. And we did a show together this uh, fall. I have Swamp Thing's legs. Oh, from that's from Swamp Thing. Yeah. And Brad, Brad Zaka, Dark Designs, who is part of the HSPPA. Shout out to Brad. <laughs> does uh, some of our, our conservation work, and he's spent uh, tireless uh, amount of time this uh, past year fixing those legs up uh, in time for this this event so we reunited Dan with and it's, it sounds odd to say it this way we reunited Dan with uh, Swamp Thing's lower torso that's <laughs> lower, cool man lower half <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me, years so uh, he's going to be, be writing something about you know that experience and, and working on Swamp Thing and stuff but uh, so Dan and I forged a relationship and uh, I started producing for him and we made a movie last year that's uh, being edited currently called It's Just a Game. Oh, wow. And I didn't know that. It's really, really, I'm really excited about this yeah. one. Um, just a fantastic script and just a, a fun film. And I'm, I'm in it. Um, I don't ever claim to be an actor. I play big guy with beard usually uh, <laughs> nah but you'd be you'd be good for a lot of stuff man <laughs> um, but yeah so I, I'm in that but uh, if, if you've seen uh, stuff in our, our exhibits this this, uh, this past year there's been this female mannequin with a skull face at most of the shows and that's the lead character from It's Just a Game Skull Girl she's like her normal assassin Oh wow, um, what is so, it like a yeah. prosthetic or? Uh, it's a mask. Oh cool, cool. Um, who did that? There, there is a face reveal, uh, but I, I can't. Right, right. Talk about that because it's, it's a reveal. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, and before we completely forget, I just wanted to shout out Brad real quick, cause I feel like he's so underrated with what he does. He's like literally one of the best in the game with a. Uh, the sculpting and, and effects, so shout out to Brad Zonka and uh, Dodd Designs. I agree. I like it's, it too that Brad just kept okay. it, he <laughs> just he just kept it simple in the name. He's like, oh, I need a name? Yeah, we'll just do my name backwards. How about that? <laughs> hard, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a cool dude, it's man. It's amazing how many people don't, don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so shout out to him, man. He's cool. He's cool only on that. He's definitely, he's yeah. definitely going places, man. His work is amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, he's working on something really awesome right now. And I shouldn't bring it up because I can't say anything more about it. <laughs> well, truthfully, James, I thought he was going to come on the show with you. So I was like, I had a couple questions even for him. So, but. Um, we don't live together. <laughs> no, yeah, but aren't you like, aren't you neighbors or something? Uh, pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Over. It takes about fifteen minutes. Oh, okay. To get between our houses, but he's literally on the same street I'm on, 
in another town across the, on the other side of a highway, and it's hilarious that that happened. So it's like a main road thing, and he's well, all. I mean, if, if it went through the highway, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's been stalking me since the band days. So. Oh, man. Yeah, you guys on Facebook, I I can't do it. You guys are, like, so <laughs> brutal with each other. Remember one time, I'm not going to say exactly what you guys said, but I was like, yo, can you guys take this to PMs? Because it was, like, on my page, and you were like, man, we're just busting balls. I was like, oh, <laughs> damn, I thought you guys were going at it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty typical. <laughs> do you have any um anything like in the works like uh props in the works that you're about to obtain that you're gonna reveal soon um uh yeah well uh I, I, it's hard to, to, to think about what hard hitting questions what, on the Lampion lane um well because uh I, I when I I acquire something when I show it and when I show it are, are can be months and years apart. Yeah. Um, so to think what's, I mean, I, I've got one that, that I'm going to be announcing next week. Um, uh, if you're familiar with pixels, uh, we have the lady Lisa character, her complete outfit. And we're announcing that to bring to, um, lion con February 3rd and 4th. Wow, that's pretty sick. Uh, we got some new Silent Hill stuff, some stuff from Scream Queens. Yeah, some cool stuff. Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, uh, suit and uh, uh, Dr. Coat, I'm not, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Now, you're at the conventions and stuff like that. Do you ever get these I mean there's plenty of cool moments but do you ever get those moments where like you actually get to reunite whoever it is that you know was in possession of like the prop and for the movie uh every now and then I mean like for example with, with Daniel in November with the legs swapping legs that was an amazing time he was like in, in awe because he was right. eight the last time he saw those um but yeah, I, I mean, it, it happens fairly frequently because I try and, and gear the exhibits to go along with the guests at a show. Right. The downside is when they're just not interested. <laughs> yeah, they always, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of that out there, I'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to the, the hobby, and it's, it's crazy because, you know, I don't care how big I got if, like, you called me up and was like, oh, you know, for one your second movie you ever did, I got the coat. You should come to this, you know, you're in town this weekend. You should come to the convention and try this on. We'll take pictures. I'd be all over that. I mean, you know, I don't I don't have the crazy money like the celebrities do, but I can tell you right now that'd be pretty cool to, like, meet up and do that stuff, so. Yeah. There's, there's been some, some fun moments with, um, um, like, Kane Hunter. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> I have, uh, I have, I have Kane Hodder. You guys uh, are friends, <laughs> right? You guys are straight up friends, right? No, 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 no. I, I have him. It's, it's his life cast of his entire life. Oh, body okay. From, okay. From Friday 13th, part 7. <laughs> For some reason, I uh, thought you guys had, like, a personal relationship. I don't know why. No, no. And uh, we see each other a lot, but I, and, uh. Yeah, that's cool, um, man. That's cool. So, yeah. what, it's a prosthetic face piece you got of him? No, no, it's his full body. Oh, my goodness. From... That's what I keep saying. I have Kane Hodder. Just... <laughs> you, meant, I... you meant I have Kane Hodder. Okay, now I yeah. get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> his entire body life counts. That uh, is so cool. Friday it's... Six. it's what uh, John Carl Buckler used to create the suit for, for part seven and the prosthetics and everything for the body. Um, so I, I had that up at a show and, and Kane came by and, and he looked at it and he looked at me and he goes, he couldn't, you couldn't like, you know, do anything about the, the package. Because, <laughs> 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 yeah. cause it, you know, it's like, looks like a mannequin. There is nothing there. <laughs> yeah, right, right. 
He's funny with yeah. the fans, man. Yeah. Whenever he takes pictures with me, he like chokes me. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> yeah, and then there's uh, uh he put some oh, oh uh, Dick Warlock. Yeah, man, um, he's the man. He came by at a show, and he uh, being a stunt man, you know, we we had all the uh, Planet of the Apes armor there and the stunt armor and stuff and this was uh we got really like interested in just going through it and uh, I, mean, I think if we had more time he almost wanted to try it all <laughs> oh yeah man those are always cool moments i made a uh i made a mick foley mankind replica mask and um, I sent it to the customer and the customer went and met Mick Foley and Mick Foley wanted to try it on but he didn't want to like he's in the video he says he doesn't want to ruin it but it's like oh I wish you would have just un- undid it and put it on because I like made it so you could wear it you know what I mean but it was still cool to get a shout out from him you know what I mean so but that's back to what you were saying that's uh that must be cool when it's like he's all about it like you know when when they're not sour, you know what I mean? And they love the that you have this, and they're like, man, I, I want to try this whole thing on right now. That must be so cool. Yeah. It makes yeah. you feel like you're doing something, James, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this is this is why I do this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's when I, you know, it gets tiring, you know, the, the, the setting up and... Yes. And, and the teardown, and then just the, the hours you're, you're there for, you know, 10... 12 hours a day um, showing things but then you know that that person comes through and, and it happens a lot with the Harry Potter stuff right where the you you let them hold the envelope the acceptance letter and, and they break into tears or the, the five year old girl who I let wear Wonder Woman's tiara you know the last I want you to see her welling up and it's like this is my idol I'm Oh, that's crazy. And, and that's why I do it, and I just I keep doing it. You know? Right. It's, no matter what happens, it's so at that moment, that's why I have the HSPPA out there. Yeah. Seeing people happy is what it's all about. Um, yeah, the smiles. <laughs> your favorite Halloween movie is Resurrection, correct? Yeah, where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, 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 I'm not going there. I just wanted to know, do you, you have props from that film, or... Because it's, it's one of your favorite Halloweens. What props do you have from that? I, I might know, but I want you to tell us. <laughs> um, well, uh, there's the, the unused, uh, production mask. Yes, uh, I've seen out a lot. Yep. Um, I have the, um, SFX knife... Uh, that kills Jamie Lee Curtis. Nice. That, the one that stabs her in the back, of course. Yeah, and it, it's it's a half knife. Yep. Um, which is cool. Um, I have his baby pictures, um, which are mostly from the deleted scenes from the original cut. Which were sick. Um, I liked Resurrection too. Gary, Gary, what's his name? Gary J. Clayton as, as Young Myers. Yep. Um, and some pieces from the the house, uh, the, the burnt teddy bear with all the disfigured toys and stuff shoved in it. Um, some behind the scenes photos, things like that. Wow. Yeah. Have you ever met Brad Lurie? <clears throat> many times, many times. That's awesome. Many I've times. never I met almost, him. In... Almost felt stalkerish. <laughs> I've never met him. Is he's obviously a. He seems like yeah. a wicked nice guy. How is he in person? Yeah, he definitely is. Definitely, is. just like Chris, he's he's really really friendly. That's so cool, South man. Dude. For serial killers, you know, they play pretty nice. They're they're pretty nice guys in real life. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they're they're all stunt men, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different world. So. Right, right. Yeah. All right, James. So <clears throat> we're gonna get up out of here. Where can everybody find you at? Uh, Facebook. Um, it's just uh, search HSPPA. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, and that's the best way to uh, to see what we're doing, what we're up to. Um, 
go on to kickstarter.com and, and search the HSPPA and get a, into our, our second book. A lot of goodies in there. Yes, uh, and, and how can they get it's the... It's basically a pre-order, um, but there's specials you can get with it by doing the Kickstarter, like uh, exclusive pins, T-shirts, uh, autographs. Um, all the guys I mentioned that are contributing to the, the book are doing a special signed book plate that's only available in limited numbers on the, uh, the Kickstarter, things like that. So, yeah. So that's pretty rocking. That's book number two. Uh, can You can still get book number one, right? You can, you can. Um, we have a store uh, link uh, on our Facebook page, but you can go on to Amazon barnesandnoble.com and, and get it. Alright. Listen, man, you're one yeah. of the coolest dudes I've ever been around. Well, not uh, been around, but that I ever talked to. Um, you've done a lot for me, and I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you coming on here and shooting the poop with I me for a little while. Yeah. yeah. And uh, definitely won't be the last time. Rock on, man. Alright, James. It's 45 right, Lampkin Lane, everybody. We'll talk to you Thanks. soon. Thanks again, man. You are the best. You are. Thanks for your time, Lane. Take it easy, bud. All right, brother.